Welcome back. We have found um, more cemetery near the old house. This is a scary old cemetery. Many of the, of the tombstones are crumbling or falling over, and the entire place is overgrown with weeds. A mountain range looms to the east, and all around a forest encroaches. How odd, you see a crypt door built right into the mountainside. That might be worth checking out. Big lion on top of the crypt. Stone crypt is built into the mountainside. The door is locked. We don't have a key. You don't have the key to unlock this door. Indeed we don't. An interesting statue of a lion is mounted above the crypt door. Can we read some more tombstones here? I don't think this cross has anything on it, but let's try. 1634 to 1672. She'd done her best. Short, but sweet, I guess. To the point. Betty Cowden, 1650 to 1669. Here lieth the body of Betty Cowden, who would live longer, but she couldn't. But she Cowden? Couldn't? I don't know. It doesn't rhyme otherwise. Sorrow and grief made her decay when she lost her lover at sea one day. That's not nice. Why do I expect to find a message written in voodoo code here? Dentist Brown. Stranger, approach this spot with gravity. John Brown is filling his last cavity. What a fun pun. This is sort of like the punny death messages in other <laughs> in other CR games, only they don't apply to us, but to other people, which makes them better, I guess. At length, my friends, the feast of life is o'er. I've eat sufficient, I'll drink no more. My night is come, I've spent the jovial day, this time to part, but oh, what is to pay? You're not close enough, I guess. Let's try this one. 1546. Reader, here lies, but forbear to read more without a tear. One, I cannot speak the rest. You may weep, I'll smite my breasts. Grief preventing, and this stone, too small to be written on. Only this, a little boy, Willie, in Abram's bosom's laid. More children who are dead. Again, a bit of a mood killer. Here lies a poor woman who was always tired. She lived in a house where help wasn't hired. Her last words on earth were, were Dear friends, I am going to where there's no cooking or washing or sewing. For everywhere, for, for everything there is exact to my wishes. For where they don't eat, there's no washing of dishes. I'll be where loud anthems will always be ringing. But having no voice, I'll be quit of the singing. Don't mourn for me now, don't mourn for me never. I am going to do nothing forever and ever. Well, that's one way to look at it. Okay, um, not much else to do here. For the moment, anyway. Until we can find a key or something to get into the crypt. So, let's uh, go north. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Doesn't look normal. You've come upon a bizarre group of scary, human-like trees. A thick forest of pine trees surrounds a strange group. Steep mountains block your way to the east. Oh, seems we have arrived in this dark, dank, tree-infested forest. Oops! Time to leave this mortal world. First death! That took long. Roberta says, Thank you for playing King's Quest IV, The Perils of Rosilla. Next time, be more careful. And trust me, if you're playing this game without knowing what you're doing, and you will die a lot in that case, you're going to hate her stupid smile so much. I've read that uh, it said somewhere that Roberta apparently had more trouble writing death sequences for Rosilla as a girl than she did for her previous male protagonists, but that sure as hell didn't stop her. Okay, let's not get too close to the trees. I guess going north is out for now, so let's go west instead. Oh, more of these damn trees. 
Hopefully we can get by them without us dying. One thing that this game is fortunately uh, void of is wandering dangers like ogres or wizards or thieving dwarves or whatever. Except for one thing. Which is near the house up to the north here, but we'll see that later. A thick forest of pine trees surrounds you. You see a house in the distance to the north. I guess the robin has given up on uh, worms and is instead looking for food in the tree. You see small birds here and there. Let's go west, as we've been doing before. You have entered a shady wooded area with birds calling from the many trees. You notice a pool in the distance to the north. I guess that's where those columns are, but we'll keep going west for now. And we're at the back of a house. A beautiful green meadow dotted with wildflowers serves as the fisherman's spacious backyard. The flower's sweet scent fills the air. Um, there's actually something I want to do uh, if I can find him. I want to find the minstrel again. Who I believe shows up either on this screen or the one to the west from here. Come on. Oh, <laughs> there he was. And still is. Oh, um, well, we've seen that message before, and we've seen the minstrel before. Last time we saw him, I said uh, he should try to find a new vocation, like acting, and I didn't say that uh, completely at random. Let's try and give him the Shakespeare book. He can't be worse at uh, acting than at playing the lute. You hand the Shakespeare book to the minstrel. Curiously, he opens it and begins to read aloud, first hesitantly, then with increased forcefulness as he begins to get into it. Suddenly, he stops and looks at you. This is wonderful, he exclaims. This gives me a new lease on life. No longer am I a mere minstrel. Now I will become a famous actor. To be or not to be. How's that? He then gives you his loot, bids you farewell, and wanders off to stardom. He's off to California, I guess. Or Broadway. Or, I don't know, the Royal Shakespeare Company in England. And he gave us his loot. And we already know that Rosella is quite musically gifted, so let's try playing the lute. Well, that's... That's just stupid. Couldn't they have just programmed this to let me do that here? Okay, let's head back to uh, where we were before. Something else I want to do here before we look at the house. A beautiful green meadow dotted with wildflowers serves as the fisherman's spacious backyard. The flower's sweet scent fills the air. There's nothing here. However, um, there is something that can show up here. And I kind of want to find it. There we go! That looks familiar! Oh. You see a lively creature who is at the same time both man and goat. He's a satyr, and his name is Pan. He seems to be greatly enjoying his flute music. Hi there, Pan. You attempt to speak to Pan, but he pays you no mind. He's too wrapped up in his flute music. Well, as they say, if you can't uh, can't beat them, join them. Let's try playing the lute. Rosella's definitely better at doing that than the minstrel was. And Pan is fascinated. Pan has ceased his dancing and now looks at you and the lute curiously. Can we talk to him now? You speak to Pan, but he doesn't respond. He only stares at you expectantly. It seems he's interested in that loot. Give loot to Pan. 
fine. Okay, Fang gratefully accepts your gift of the loot, and in return, he gifts you his flute. Happy now, he dances away with it. And now we got, uh, a flute. A pan flute, I guess. It's actually, uh, not, doesn't really look like what I would normally call a pan flute, but anyway. Um, let's, uh, go west. We're done trading uh, items around for now. And let's take a look at the uh, fisherman and his house. A poor fisherman's shanty adorns this part of the coastline. A pier stretches from the house out into the ocean to the west. You see a pretty pretty meadowland off to the east. There's an anchor on the floor here. An old rusted anchor leans against the wall of the house. Can we take that? It's too heavy for you to move. That has never stopped us before. Remember that when we were to the south of here, we could actually see the fisherman sitting on the, the edge of the pier. I wonder if he's still there. Yep. Looks like it. And there's a seagull. It's just an ordinary seagull. You see a grizzled old fisherman on the pier. Apparently he isn't having any luck today. You say a few words to the old fisherman. However, he must have other things on his mind as he seems to ignore you. Indeed! Well, I guess they're not biting. And he goes inside. Let's follow him. Let's see. Maybe we can do something for him. Always help everybody. That's the King's Quest uh, mantra. You knock loudly on the shanty door. A woman's voice answers, Just come on in! Okay. We will. The inside of the fisherman's shack looks almost as shabby as the outside. You see the old fisherman at the table and his wife kneading bread at the counter. The fisherman's fishing pole has been set in the corner. Talk, woman. You say hello to the poor woman. With little patience, she responds, what are you doing in here, young lady? Can't you see I'm busy? We have enough problems without worrying about you. Hey, you invited me in. How about the fisherman? Maybe he has something to say. You talk to the grizzled fisherman as he sits at the table. Sighing, he tells you, Them fish ain't been biting lately. If things don't get better soon, I don't know what to do. Poor man. I wonder if we have something that could help him. Well, if all else fails, give him treasures. Let's try see uh, seeing if he wants the diamonds. You offer the pouch of diamonds to the fisherman, who takes it gladly. Wife, give the girl my fishing pole in trade, he tells his tired wife. Obediently, she retrieves the pole and hands it to you. Thank you very much, she says, smiling. You have certainly helped us. Well, it's not exactly a fair trade, but hey, fishing pole. Might be useful, and we helped some people, which is always nice. And we will continue in the next video.